Well, family and friends, welcome. You may be seated. Amy and Eric have invited us here to celebrate this holy moment with them. A holy moment as they open a new chapter on their journey together. As a kid, I don't think I ever really enjoyed going to weddings because you always had to get all dressed up to go watch two people look lovingly into each other's eyes and eventually kiss. But if you think about it, from beginning to end, God has loved weddings. His very first miracle was at a wedding. 
When he would paint a picture of heaven, it was a wedding feast. And when he gave Paul words to talk about marriage, Paul wrote that marriage is a picture of the love commitment that Jesus has for each one of us. So this is an incredible moment. Today as we gather together, we join as witnesses of a ceremony that has been practiced in some way by millions of people over thousands of years. God smiles every time this happens because a reminder is given for just a moment of the love that Jesus has for each one of us. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you so much for this moment. Thank you that as we see the love that Amy and Eric have for each other, we are also catching a glimpse of the love that you have for us. God, we ask that you would shape these two hearts for your glory. Thank you for making a path that would bring them together. We ask that it would also bring them closer to you. Thank you for the rivers of life that you have poured into them and will pour through them. Father, you are great, and there is no one like you. But we ask that in this new marriage that is beginning today, that you will make your name great. Bless Amy and Eric, and pour out your spirit upon them. Jesus, more than anything, you are what we need, and you are what they need. Let them taste your joy and let it overflow from them in the years to come. Even now, strengthen them for the holy adventure of living out the vows that they will make today. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amy and Eric had selected a portion of scripture for me to read. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31 through chapter 13, verse 8. And Paul writes this. Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. And yet I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. And speaking of God's great love, Jung Ju Sung is going to lead us in the congregational hymn, O oh Perfect Love. And if you're able to, we would invite you to stand.
We all know the importance of getting a good start. The first day on the job, the first day of school, the first date. I think that's why we put so much time and effort into weddings. We want to get off to a good start. But here's the question. What pieces of a wedding are absolutely essential and what pieces are optional? For example, we know the fancy and expensive clothes. The bride gets a beautiful dress that may or may not be worn again. The groom wears a tux or buys some clothes because, let's be honest, nobody cares as much how the groom looks. You probably won't hear too many people say how amazing Eric looked today. But he looks good. <laughs> expensive clothes are not needed for a great start. Then there are the receptions. There's all kinds of receptions. Delicious meals, dancing, laughter. It's, it's great memories. It's a great time. But they're not absolutely essential. They're optional. The most important piece of a wedding, the part that is a non-negotiable, is the heartbeat of the wedding is the vows. A wedding is a vow and everything else is optional. Marriages begin with a promise. Like many others in the room have done, you will stand before us, one another, and the God who created you, and you will make a promise. At the heart of marriage is a promise. I promise this to you as long as it makes sense. No. As long as it's easy. No. As long as the marriage makes me happy. No. I didn't stand next to Thea, who happens to be my wife, at the altar and promise her that every day with me would be better than the last. I didn't promise unending bliss or eternal happiness. If that's what you think you're being promised today, you'll inevitably be disappointed. I promise this to you as long as we both shall live, till death do us part. It's a no matter what kind of promise, which is about as close as any two imperfect people can get to the kind of promise that God makes to each one of us. That here in this world, filled with so much uncertainty and brokenness, God says, I will love you no matter what, I promise you. So what are we promising each other today? According to the Bible, you're promising to become one. I think of it in terms of becoming one heart. When we speak of the heart, we're speaking of the deepest, most real you. Love starts in the heart. Our hearts are so important. A wise man once wrote in Proverbs 4 that above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. What could be more important for each of your hearts on this journey of becoming one heart than connecting with God's heart? In 1 John 4, John says that God is love. This means that in 1 Corinthians 13, the, the verses that we read just a few minutes ago, where Paul describes love, we can substitute God for love. God is patient. God is kind. God does not envy he does not boast. He is not proud. God does not dishonor others. He is not self-seeking or easily angered. God keeps no record of wrongs. He does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. God always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. God never fails. We are here because God has put a passion in your hearts for each other. But listen, the passion that you have for each other is nothing compared to the passion that God has for you. Make the choice to let God love you. Don't put up any blocks. Keep your heart soft towards Him and towards one another. Soak in God's love. Pursue His heart. Walk together in His direction. Let God love you and He will help you to love each other. And I can tell you that you will need His help. There will be days ahead and you know this when you're not even sure that you like each other, let alone love each other. It can take hard work to love someone well. In the days ahead, there will be times when your marriage is tested beyond maybe anything that you've experienced up till now, but perhaps even times where you'll be tempted to quit. But there will also be opportunities that you'll be given by God to connect with each other in such a powerful, life-giving way. You'll have moments when you experience God's love for you being poured out through your spouse. Being a part of a wedding always makes me think back to my own wedding day. As I think back, I, I have this intense feeling of love. This is how God feels towards every single one of us. We are able to love each other well because God loves us even better. Today we are here to listen to you tell each other, I love you. But what if long before you ever set the date or shop for rings or anything, what if God looked forward to this date, May 30th, Eric, remember the date? Max, a gentle reminder, to be well received. <laughs> What if he looked forward to this date so that he could get our attention for just a minute and remind us of his great love and to tell you that if you let him love you, he'll help you to love each other. Now we come to the heart of the wedding. 
the vows. Marriage begins with a promise, a promise to love each other as God loves you. Eric and Amy, will you turn and hold hands and beat you to the punch? <laughs> Eric, I'll start with your questions. Do you, Eric and Shelley, take Amy Parsons, who you now hold by the hand, to be your true and lawful wife? Will you love, treasure, respect, and defend her in sickness and in health, in abundance and in adversity, and in every situation that you will ever face together? Finally, leaving all others behind, will you be committed and faithful to her until death do you part? Do you, Amy Parsons, take Eric Michelle, who you now hold by the hand, to be your true and lawful husband? Will you love, treasure, respect, and stand by him in sickness and in health, in abundance and in adversity, and in every situation that you ever face together? Finally, leaving all others behind, will you be committed and faithful to him till death do you part? Now we'll have the exchanging of the vows. Eric, if you will repeat after me. I, Eric Michelli, take you, Amy Parsons. I, Eric Michelli, take you, Amy Parsons. As my wife and companion. As my wife and companion. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better or worse, for, better or worse. For, richer or for, poorer, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, and in health. To, love and to, treasure, to love and to treasure, till we are parted by death according to God's will. To this end, I pledge you my love and faithfulness. Amen. I, Amy Parsons, take you, Eric, and Shelley. As my husband and companion, as my husband and companion, to have and to hold from this day forward, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, for better or worse, richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, to love and to treasure, to love and to treasure, till we are parted by death according to God's will, till we are parted by death according to God's will. To this end, I pledge you my love and faithfulness. Yeah, I have the rings. Eric, as you place the ring on Amy's finger, say these words. Amy, receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity, as a sign of my love and fidelity, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you place the ring on Eric's finger, say these words with me: Eric, Eric, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. Receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The marriage vows that you have now made before God and these witnesses, I do now confirm in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now with the authority given to me as a minister of the gospel, I now declare you husband and wife. You are no more two but one, and what God has joined together, let no one separate. I'd like to pray a prayer of blessing over the couples who will pray with me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you, Eric and Amy. I bless you with all the promises of God through Jesus. May the Holy Spirit make you strong relationally and spiritually to know and follow Jesus with expectant faith. May you be blessed with supernatural strength to turn your eyes from foolish and worthless things. Instead, may you follow hard after God, seeking His passions and enjoying His pleasures. I bless your ears to hear words spoken in truth with grace, the life-giving words of Scripture. Words meant to build up rather than tear down. To shut out words spoken in anger or bitterness, the critical and the demeaning. I bless your feet to walk the path of total commitment. 
Your hands to be tender, helping hands, blessing those in need. Your hearts to be humble, courageous, and compassionate. Loving people more than rules and loving God more than people. I bless your minds to be strong, disciplined, balanced, and full of faith. May God's grace be upon you as a family. May your home be a refuge of rest, renewal, and unconditional love. May sounds of joy and laughter grace your walls. May God open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on you while you seek to be a blessing to those around you. God give you strength to walk the path of life together with those he brings alongside you. May his grace be upon you to fulfill the dreams that he has given you. May his goodness and mercy follow you every single day of your life. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord smile upon you and give you peace. Amen. I now have the privilege of presenting to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Eric and Amy Michelle. Eric, you may kiss your bride. to make your way to the kayak room for photographs. God bless and have a great day. Please stand. Mm -hmm. 